let's talk about your feelings. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. You may be wondering what this video is about. It's a really important topic. When we talk about the things that you have to do to be successful in wildlife photography, we often talk about technical knowledge. We'll talk about techniques such as being able to expose and compose and focus. We talk about knowledge needed to select gear and to use that gear. We'll talk about the knowledge needed and the skills needed to edit images. And we'll talk about uh, the knowledge of animal behavior, knowing what to look for, what to capture. We talk a lot about skills and we talk a lot about knowledge. And these are all things that we absolutely need. But there's one thing that we don't really talk much about and that's feelings. Don't go, it's an important topic. When we see some interesting animal behavior and we react to it and we capture some images and then later on when we're editing those images, what is driving our behavior, the way we're acting is our feelings, even if we don't know it. If you put two photographers in the same situation, give them the same camera, the same lens, same focal length, even tell them to take images at exactly the same time, they will take different images and they will edit differently. And what will affect the way they do those things is their feelings. Our feelings are the things that make us different and individual. I see a lot of photographers who produce work that is technically impressive. Everything is in focus, everything is sharp, and I do appreciate those details, but sometimes after I've appreciated those details, there's not much else to appreciate. Sometimes the image just doesn't stir any emotion in me, and sometimes that's because the photographer has not really acknowledged their feelings in the creative process. If you have some people, sometimes like let's say two photographers, and they see a scene, and then later on they're discussing it, and they might talk about it, and they'll talk about what they saw. And even if they saw the same thing or they describe it the same way, what they, what they thought they, they, that they saw, they won't feel that necessarily feel the same way about it. When we're editing our images, sometimes people will be trying to recreate what they saw. And I suggest to you that instead of doing that, to think also about what you felt. And that's a really important distinction and a different mindset to have. I was editing this image of a fox kit just today, and I took this image last year. And what I was thinking about, I remember at the time, it, the, the, the sun was very low, it was uh, starting to set, and there were very strong shadows and the light was quite intense. Uh, and also when I was editing this image later to, uh, earlier today and just thinking about what is going on in the world recently, one of the things that, that was really important to me to bring out in this image was the areas of darkness and lightness, those contrasts. I think it's really important to acknowledge those in, in the greater world and also in the smaller worlds that we have. For example, there's a small world that these kids lived in near their den and they didn't really go far from the den, so that was their world. And also when I take this image, when I took this image, the frame of this image is like a little world that you see. And one of the things that was interesting is if I show you the raw edit or the raw image before I edited the image, you'll see that uh, on the right hand side of the image, it's brighter uh, proportionally um, than in the edit. So I basically sh sort of shifted the light over to the left a bit. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to make it about the kit going from dark to light. That was an important thing for me. Another thing that was really interesting at the time that I really felt was the excitement of these kits. The reason this kit is running and the reason why it has that little glint in its eye is because the mother had brought back food. And whenever 
the Vixen would bring back food, that would be a very exciting time. And uh, one of the things that's really interesting is that sometimes you'll see the, the really smart kids will position themselves away from the den uh, where they think their mother might come back so that they can be the first to get, get the food. So all of these, these things the way that I feel really do affect the way that I produce my work. And if you let your feelings out and, and let them drive what you're doing, it, it can really help to bring out your, your style, your individual style. And I think that's a really powerful and a really important thing. So a couple of things. Uh, one is, as usual, uh, if you have any thoughts about this, you want to chat about it, uh, if you have a comment, just feel free to post below. If you want to have an extended discussion about it, jump on over to the Discord server there. The other thing is that I wanted to let you know about a educational initiative I've been working on. I've been working on a, a couple of different things, but this is one of them. Obviously with the COVID situation, I've not been able to teach as I usually would, but I've been working for the last couple of months on getting everything set up to teach online. And I really wanted to make it a a impactful quality experience. So what I put together, what I just announced this morning, uh, and you guys are the second group to find out about it. I, I did send it out to a small mailing list this morning and a bunch of people have already signed up. This is a five week uh, immersive wildlife photography workshop taught entirely online, but it's all live. There's no canned content at all. It's me talking on camera like I'm doing right now. Uh, and we everything is live streamed so that you can uh, type your questions in the chat and then I'll answer them on camera. And I'll use this kind of setup where I can talk to you and show you editing and show you what I see in the camera and show you how I hold my camera and all these kinds of things. And between the classes, we use a Discord server, a private Discord server where the class can, can engage further and have further discussions and even post images to get feedback so the idea is that it's really immersive and it's called 10X Wildlife Photography. And the reason it's called that is because the idea is that you could possibly get 10 times better than you are now or accelerate your progress uh, by, by 10 times. So uh, if you're interested in uh, finding out more about it, I've got that link in the description of this uh, video below. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, please take care and I will see you in the next video.